Hello guys, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls and it's Christmas week here um, while I'm filming this part and I've just installed our bifold door so they are now officially in and we are officially locked up so that's huge for us but it just one of those massive milestones you need to reach and particularly i've got our nice lounge suite in there we want to make sure that it's, uh we get the dust and the dirt out of there and i'm pretty much into the internal fit out in there with all the electrics done i'm about to start on the plumbing and uh, obviously hooking up the engines and getting them going now did i put the cat and i'm talking about the cat amongst the pigeons last week with our bow modification we had a lot of discussion about it over the uh the comments and certainly there was a lot that uh, you know weren't too happy about it. There was a couple of comments about should I have put reverse bows on. In fact, there was a lot of comments about reverse bows. There was also a lot of comments about the fact that I'm going to slow the boat down. And I may not even exceed 10 knots. Well, quite frankly, if you've ever been on one of these things and it's doing 10 knots, you don't want to be going much faster than that. This is a cruising cat. It has never been a performance cat. So I'm not of that intention to get that thing up to 80 or 20 knots that's the last thing we want to do you know mate i'm in my late 50s i really don't need to be doing 20 knots in a cat this size this week i'm going to continue on with some of those bow modifications and just show you how i'm going to form them it actually turned out beautiful i'm not going to show you the finished product but you're going to have to hang on and watch a few more videos before you see that so when i woke up one morning and i thought i'm going to get rid of that hull mold that i started on about six or seven weeks ago and uh, I just it just got the better of me. I had to go over and destroy the rest of it and get it to the tip. And uh, the cost involved in doing something like that, wow, it was uh, it was exorbitant to say the least. But we got into it. It was potentially one of the hardest weeks I've ever put in. It was hot. It was windy. And uh, I had to get Janet in to help me load the thing, which is just tons and tons of fiberglass and uh, just a tragedy. But I know we're all sick of seeing the deck mold and the hull mold, but that hull mold almost broke me, but not quite. <laughs> don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have a couple of days off now. I'm locked up. I'll lock the doors. I'm going to leave. Hopefully forget about the cat for a couple of days while we get over our Christmas break. And I hope you all have a wonderful new year and enjoying the holidays. And uh, let's get into it. I'm going to pull apart this whole structure now. Take it up into the factory and start to fabricate all of these pieces. I'm going to have to do 20 of the stations and also a new bow stem and new stem or, or strong back along the bottom there to attach these stations to. These will actually be made of 25mm uh, cord foam with laminate on each side so these particular parts are rigid the remainder will be just soft foam that I can shape back to the ribs so as you can see here I'm going to use this foam to form the strong back of the uh, keel line and then the new stem this will actually be cut out of this as well so I can pull this apart now knowing that I've got it in place so I'll make two of these entire units for the port and the starboard and then I'm going to cut all of these templates out of this one sheet hopefully get them all out of it I think I will get all of these out of it and then I'll have the basis of the complete bow modifications
All right, I finished cutting out all of the first parts for the starboard side. I need to now make sure that the port side is semi-symmetrical with the other side, and there's a good chance it's not because all the inside uh, shapes are going to have to be transferred to the inside on the other side. So it's a bit of a process, but hopefully I can get all those cut today, and then I can start fitting these tomorrow but i do need to grind off all the gel coat on the boat uh that's going to be a massive problem right up on the front and that's going to be a pretty late night job and then uh probably into the weekend as well so that the uh, the dust can subside down onto the ground so i've got the port side uh strong back here i'm going to take it up and hot glue it onto the boat and then i'll take all the shapes down and make sure that they actually transfer over to the port side uh, equally or I may have to recut or reshape more templates and I'm hoping I don't have to they should be pretty close it's been quite an effort getting those cut basically we've got all the port side here starboard side here and uh, the work's going to continue now on the hull so what I'm required to do is I'm going to have to sand all the gel coat off the hull up on the bow to three meters back so that I can fare this whole thing back in glue the strong back and the new stem in place and then glue all these in place it's a pretty simple process but then from there i then have to then fill those sections with foam so i'll be working on the band saw doing pretty much that for every single station there's 20 on each side so that's 40 that's only 400 pieces of foam to uh to glue in place and janet will be mixing up and we'll be just bogging them in i've got eight sheets of 25 mil foam stored up there, ready to go. And that's what they're for. I bought them intentionally quite some time ago, knowing that I'd struggle to get hold of foam for this job. So the stem itself and the actual strong back here for the starboard side is uh, absolutely perfect. And this is gonna work out so, so well. I'm very, very happy with the way we're working on this. It's, uh, it's solved a problem and it won't look as unsightly as a dirty great big knob sticking out of the front of the boat. Well, that was absolutely no fun. <laughs> oh, God. That's taken me five hours to flap this stat down. Pretty much gives me the chance now to glue the strong back on, and then from there I can... Yeah, I've got to stand up there to get the stem on. But, you know, I don't have to stand back too far on the bow. It's more mainly down in here, down along the uh, on the base. But I can glue that on tomorrow, which would be really nice to actually get that one glued in. Uh, I think I'm going to change tack over on the other side i think over here what i might do i might just sand the first 10 centimeters along the bottom so i can at least get the base glued on i'm just not looking forward to doing that one. <laughs> oh man that that was hard work i was laying on the ground uh yeah pretty much laying in the gravel down there but you know it's it's done and you know what's really good is uh my laminating's perfect there's not one void in any of that i'm very very impressed with that uh it's all vinyl ester too so the good thing about that is uh, this epoxy is going to take to that really well. It was well worth the effort to sand it down. It's five hours of just flap disc. And I haven't even finished this side. My flap discs are basically blunt, but I'm going to buy some new ones in the morning, finish that off quickly, and then I can glue that on. In fact, I can then start to glue the shapes on once I've got this in place. I was worried I wasn't going to get this far today you know i thought i'd only get the shapes cut out but anyway <laughs> it's dark it's i don't know what time it is nine ten o'clock stuffed if i know uh i've been here since eight this morning and yeah that's another 12 hour day you add up all oh, six years of uh 10 12 hour days there's some epics in there probably some of it two or three hours some of it 12 hours um let's not exaggerate too much but yeah that's ready to go now time has come to glue in my strong backs this is basically positioned along the center line of the keel and uh, as you can see here it's pretty easy to find the center once this is screwed in place it's going to move over and basically be centered i've just loosened it so i can get some epoxy in there same deal over here 
we'll do these ones first and then uh, I'll worry about the stems later on. This is the most important part because basically the whole thing ties into here. Feed a bead of epoxy in here, get it glued on so that at least I'll be able to then glue the stations in place and uh, and start to work on filling and fairing. Big, big job ahead. All right, they're both glued in. I lost a little to live and uh, stopped filming because I was swearing too much. <laughs> but getting them square and down the center line was just pivotal to that whole operation. And uh, now you can see they're actually dead square and they're dead vertical. And it's just been a bit of a battle getting them in. I've actually put a number of cleats in. I had to drill into the hull to do that. But that's not really going to matter because it's all going to be filled with epoxy anyway. All these little positioning screws here stop the thing from moving. And, uh, and that's looking pretty good. And the other side's in as well. I've just got to tidy up some epoxy over there right now. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to wet this ground down because it's just covered in dust. It's been a bit of a battle working in the dust and the dirt. I'm definitely going to have to put some tarpaulins down or something here just to give me a clean workspace to work in. Day two of cutting up the hole mould. And uh, this is where I left it about four weeks ago in piles now i've got a skip coming on wednesday and it's sunday now i'm hoping to get you know at least all the sides and probably a lot of a bridge deck cut up uh today and get them into these flat sheets so i can get them over into the skip um over the road what a tragedy eh what a tragedy all right so this is where i left it the other day by the sarbo it'll be about half of this Gonna confess, <laughs> I think this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Just cutting this son of a bitch up. Oh, could have hired an excavator, but um, there's one about 200 meters down the road, and they're ultimately gonna take the waste away from me. But uh, man, it would have been seriously expensive. So I've done my best to sort of do my best to chop the bastard up. What a job, eh? What a fucking job. Murder. These large bridges are actually quite easy. They're only held on by about that much wood and some bolts into the steel. I sort of designed it when I re-rigged the steel framing. I designed it that way so it would be easy to pull apart or easy to move. And uh, it's paying off now. It's taken me five minutes to cut these big bridges out. And then, you know, pretty much it's just the holes I've got to get rid of. Yeah, put it right here, mate, if you can. 
Now, I believe the key to efficient waste management is to get in as much into the skip as possible as we're paying by the skip load, not by weight. I was so careful to cut as much of the mould into flat panels so as to be able to flat pack the skip to the brim. This is a 15 cubic metre skip and we filled it to the absolute limit. Cost was 1560 Australian dollars, so about a thousand US. Cost to take it to our local tip would have been in excess of four and a half thousand dollars as we pay by the metric tonne. Now I did actually try to use my hobby chainsaw to cut up some of this and with no success I blunted the blade very quickly and I destroyed the actual um, chainsaw by doing that so it wasn't worth trying to pursue that I actually used a power saw a reciprocating saw and a nine inch grinder with a diamond blade on it and eventually I got it done uh, it wasn't a great week but it had to be done I run out of daylight and uh, to be honest after three days energy <laughs> run out of energy I just um, had one of these massive slabs hit me in the shin I'm getting too old for this everyone um, 56 fuck I think I'm too old for this Put in some big, big, big days and like six years of big days, really. Um, but I don't get down, I just don't get on with it. You know, don't keep on whinging about it because if you whinge about it, you'll never get it done. So I'll come back tomorrow morning and I'll finish it. I'm going to get it all done. Excuse my language, but I think I'm entitled to a bit of a swear. We're down to the ugly bits. Not you, these. Well, we've got all the good stuff in there, now we've got all the ugly bits. There's a lot of big chunks that we're going to try to fit in. We're, we're down to about not quite a two-thirds of the skip, so we've still got a lot of space. And uh, I reckon we're going to get it all in, honey. In an hour, it's going to be done. Let's do it. Honey, you look fantastic compared to me. I'm not saying much. No, I know. I know that. You're not happy, are you? No. No. But anyway, we've got to get done. We're, this is it. This is the yee-haw scene where we go, yee-haw! That's gone. That mould. We got, we're sorting all the little bits to make sure they all fit in the skip. And, uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff here, but that is the whole mould over there. And, uh, we're about, not even half full yet, into the skip, so I reckon we're gonna get it all in, particularly because we've broken it up into some tiny pieces to make sure we just squeeze it all in. Mm -hmm. 